quote is, the foundation of achieving any type of success on the block or in the boardroom, in the streets or the corporate suites, mm -hmm. in love, marriage, family, faith, life, health, or whatever, it starts with one simple thing. You got to believe. You better man. say that. We got Jeezy up in this motherfucker. Come on. What up, though? Hey. What What's happening? What's happening? Back home, baby. I'm back home. You back. gotta believe. Welcome home, party. It's good to have you back. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, We've been sir. waiting on you. Yes, sir. We've been waiting on you. This um. By the way, how you been? It's good to see you. Look excellent. Man, I ain't doing no, likewise, my brother. I ain't Thank doing you. no complaining, man. I, as far as I'm concerned, I ain't never had a bad day in my life. Mm. Ooh. So yeah. even, even when you went to jail. Yeah, I, you know, I, I yeah, that was an interesting <laughs> day. <laughs> a lot of great things came out of that, though. I tell you that. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. A, and that's kind of the thread of this book. Mm -hmm. Like, you, yeah, you you reimagined every challenge, um, every obstacle, every wall. Right. We'll put that under adversity. Yes. Right. And yes. then you gave it a new definition. You gave yeah. it new meaning. You know, gave it new purpose. Yeah. That requires work, though. You yeah. don't just yeah. you just don't land into that mindset where you can look at your past, your right. present, and then imagine it the way you need it to be in order for it to work. What, right? When did you start to work? You f you fail yourself into that though. Like yeah. you just go, you know, you just fall so many times. It's like being a kid. Like you fall and you know, and if you continue to fall, nobody's gonna tell you you can't. You're not gonna ever be able to walk. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Eventually you're going to be able to walk. And then it's just how cool is your walk? How confident is it? And it's just like I kept failing and failing and failing. And it's just like, hold up, but let me just sit back and think about what I learned when I failed. I lost some money, so okay. I don't want to lose money anymore. So what do I need to do now? Better mm -hmm. accounts. Mm -hmm. uh, lost some cases. I need to get better lawyers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Had some people do some foul things to me. Now I need better friends. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Had some people that used to, you know, work for me and help me, and and they didn't understand the vision. So I got better people around. And that's just how I look at it. It's just like if you win, and all you ever did is win, you know, that one time you should be a little worried because the next time you might not be so lucky, quote unquote. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? You might. And, and I call it a mental GPS. It's almost like I, I always knew in my life if I got lost, I was going to be able to find my way back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I had been through enough. So even when I had money, I'll tell you, like, I ain't like I was just always up. Yeah, it looked yeah, like I, it, though. I know. You know, I make it look good. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I done had it and lost it, you know, a lot of times. Uh -huh. And every time I learned something, and it was just one time, like, I just ain't losing it no more. Mm -hmm. I got to be better with my decisions. I got to be better with how I'm moving. I got to be better with how I'm living. And I ain't trying to preach that on nobody. I'm just saying, but when you get to a certain age, you're going to need money to live forever. Mm -hmm. it, right. don't never, it don't never stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And there's always going to be, you know, um, there's always going to be things that come at you, you know what I'm saying, that you're going to have to deal with. And, and, and some of that costs, you know, a lot of money and, some of that costs uh, what we call like uh, social equity, meaning like you got to have a, a village. You mm -hmm. got to have people around you that can make things shake. You know what I'm saying? And if you ain't applying yourself and building those type of relationships, you know, it's going to be rough. That's a fact. Right. You know what I'm saying? I've been in some court cases. I've been sitting there like, damn, you're going to take all my money, man. You know what I'm saying? But it just so happened I had the right lawyer. Mm-hmm. And he really went in there. He fought for me tooth and nail. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we have a great relationship after mm -hmm. that. And we've won several cases. And I've learned so much just by us building a relationship. But this is a person who was with me when I was down, right? And people that was around me at that time, they weren't with me when I was down. But this is one individual. So that's what I mean by you have to invest in people. Like, spend time with them, get to know them, build with them. Because... It'll be one person that'll change your whole life. Wow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Change everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Did, being a, did being a parent, that, was that enough to kind of change your mentality? Or you were, mm. early on, you were still... Well, all my kids did something different for me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I love my son. Um, that's my firstborn. Uh, he, he taught me to be responsible. Because yeah. I had him when I was young. You know what I'm saying? So that was most of my motivation to get really in the streets, in the streets, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My son lived in the projects. He came up with us, he lived in the projects. He was born in the projects, so he had a taste of that life. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. he knows, so I can't bullshit him. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, he, he's very aware. Um, and my middle daughter, um, you know, 
that's my heart. You know what I'm saying? She just taught me how to care. Yeah. Right. And she helped me shift. And 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 um, Monaco, uh, my last daughter, just taught me about patience. Mm -hmm. And my middle daughter, Armanoa, love her to death. But my kids are like, that's that's my foundation. Though. That's your foundation. But uh, to answer your question, um, they all taught me something different in a different stage of my life. But I have to admit, you know, I wasn't present as mm -hmm. I am now, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because I was trying to figure my shit out, <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I could see what my sons feel a little slighted on certain things. So we had those conversations and I, and I got to bear with them because shit, I feel the same way about my mom, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. She was trying to figure yeah. her shit out and I'm getting slighted, <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I get it. So what, 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 I, what I try to focus on is being intentional and breaking the cycle as much as I can, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, just knowing that we all do the best we can, but you know, you don't want this shit to just keep, you know, just just evolve like just, you know, just being the same pattern, the same yeah. pattern. Yeah, get the out same the cycle. Pattern. Your nurse. Yeah, you, you just you just don't yeah. want that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because these are your kids and shit. And this generation, man, you know, I I feel for them because mm -hmm. I came up when it was rough. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But they shit is real. You know, they ain't yeah. making they ain't making it past 19. Yeah. You know, 17, mm -hmm. you know, it's different. It's mm -hmm. crazy, right? Yeah. Um, Jeezy is here, man. Give this man a round of applause, yeah. man. Yes, yes, yes. G, J, Lil J here. Lil J, the author. <laughs> Lil the J, author, the author. Uh, the author of the book, The Genius Road. Okay. Um, <laughs> how did you approach this book? I, I love that you start in the beginnings. You know, you talk about, you know, uh, being a little rambunctious kid. You used, to, yeah. you used to steal a lot. Yeah, I did. I was pretty good, too. You was a thief. Yeah, um, don't leave you. <laughs> and only your, dog, your uh, car doors open around me. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I did. I, I did. Yeah, you had cousins who were in the game too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, pretty much all my family was in the game. The, okay. the people that wasn't, besides the people that wasn't working in factories. Okay. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like uh -huh. you know, my aunties and my cousins. Like it was a, you know, it was a family business. If mm -hmm. you want to be honest with you, so for a lot of the time, it didn't feel like nothing. That, nothing was going on wrong until people started getting locked up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And before that, it was like a thing that we do. And and these are the first entrepreneurs I've ever seen. Yeah. These are the people that look successful. So I'm not going to go work for a factory mm -hmm. when I can go out here and do this because it doesn't seem wrong. You're not seeing the after effect of yeah, it. Yeah, the consequences. Yeah, you're just mm -hmm. seeing what's going on in real time. You know, And I tell people all the time, like, I paid for my mom's uh, first trailer that we lived in, $3,500. It wasn't bigger than this room. Damn. Me and my mom and my sister lived in there. You know what I'm saying? And before she kicked me out, I mean, how you gonna tell me that's not success? I went out in the streets, I hustled up this money, I helped my mom out and my sister. It, that's success yeah. in anybody's book. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking at the consequences of, of who I might have hurt. Like that don't it, it don't it don't make sense, right? Because mm -hmm. to me, it's all business. Then mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But now I definitely don't right. look at it like that. So you know, anybody that's going through something like that, I I, I respect it because. You have to get to a certain point in your life where you realize, like, oh, okay, well, maybe there's another way I can go about this, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, just coming from where we come from, um, you know, success is 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 about you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But the real shit is about everybody else. Uh -huh. right. That's you know real success. Saying? Yeah, that's real success. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's... And that's where I'm at pretty much now. It's just like, why write the book now? I'm like, why not? That's why. That's what I you know was going to ask you, because you have to also be in a certain mind space to yeah. me to write a book. And yeah. so how did you sort of, because it sounds like you're very open in this. And yeah. Not that you're not open with right. us, at least. But what kind of, how did you prepare yourself for it? Because you got to uh, check out a little bit. Right. And so, so I was saying with success is mm -hmm. about you. Significance is about everybody else is what I was trying to say. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, why well, write the book now? Okay, so. And you, you can relate to this. You know, when I was coming up and I was locked up in boot camp, uh, you know, I love music. I always listen to mm -hmm. music when I was young because I learned from it. I didn't listen to music, how people listen to music, to like the beat, to like the rhythm, to like the rhyme. I'm listening for the data. Mm. And, and I fell in love with Tupac when I was um, when I was in boot camp. I had a little radio and I heard him on it. And I heard the first songs I heard was Dear Mama and uh, uh, So Many Tears. Mm. And I just felt like he was talking to me. Like he was sitting right there. He was on the top bunk. I was on the bottom. And we having a comment. I was in. I was like, this is, he stood for something. You know, and I wanted to stand for something as well because coming from where we come from, again, 
nobody really stood for nothing. Everybody just kind of did what they could do. You right. know what I'm saying? Nobody was about to fight. Nobody was about, you know, rebelling back against the struggle. Everybody was kind of like, I'll take what I can get, right? Other than the people that was taking penitentiary chances that I didn't know was penitentiary chances then. So to answer your question is like, you know, when I started trying to do music, I was more so focused on the CEO part and that didn't work. So now I had all my money invested um, and I had a studio and I had nothing but time. And one of my homies like, you should do it. You know, cause mm. we, the art, artists we had, they went to jail and they, everything was happening. And I was just like, you know what? So I worked at it for like 10 years to get to a point and I started having some success. And when the minute I got some success, I immediately, you know, went from streets is watching Trap or Die. But if you think about Top Pac's movement, it was thug life. Mm -hmm. That wasn't about being a thug though. That was about standing for something. Right. So thug motivation to me was my first entry to that. So it was about the class. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to teach and reach and, and build. So that's what I did musically, right? Mm -hmm. And I saw the impact of that. So now as a, a grown ass man and you sit back and you see all the melee that you cause and all the you know, the wrong decisions you made to lead people, you like, hold up. I done went out here and learned all this shit, all this knowledge. Let me figure out a way right. to pour it back in yeah. to these black men out here and these people out here trying to figure it out because I've been privy enough to get out and get some real mentors and, and really connect with some real leaders and start to understand that you have to be transparent, yeah. that you have to be open-minded that you have to be vulnerable because there's strength in that. A real man Absolutely. ain't tripping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There you a, go. Li a lion is a lion. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm Absolutely. Even, Even if he crying, right. he's still a lion. He's still a lion. Yeah. And for me, it's just like, you know, it, it's definitely not about the money. Um, it's, it's more so somebody gave me Think and Grow Rich and it changed my life. Mm -hmm. You know, the book Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, read that. I read it a few times and I'm like, damn, like, mm -hmm. it is so much knowledge in this book. And I kept just learning things. And now, mind you, you having regular conversations with people, but you got the answers. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> you got the answers. Like, you've been reading this book, like a textbook, and people are going through things and they're asking you questions as, as if you are smart. Yeah. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> and you just got the answers. And, mm -hmm. and to me, I was just like, yo, this is a lot of power in books. So during the pandemic, I really didn't have anything to do because the touring stopped. You right, know, of course right. I had business stuff going on, real estate and all that, but cr creatively I didn't yeah. have nothing to do. So I, I, I started to write the book. That's dope. And over the pandemic, I was just writing and writing and writing. Now, mind you, um, I wrote it the best way I could without incriminating myself. Okay, yeah, I know that's bad. You, you know what? You changed some names in the book. I, was I didn't very like careful. that. You changed some names I, right. in the book. I didn't like that. I had my lawyers look at a lot of stuff. It's like, I don't know about this one. I said, we got to change it. You know? Right. Or we got to take it out. Because like, I don't want to be like somewhere sitting down. They were like, gotcha. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because, I mean, I don't think people understood. Like, I, you know, and I'm not, you know, I'm not up here to, to brag or talk. But, like, I, I had a lot of... Well, just a lot of nightmares, you know, uh, just making my transition from the streets to music. Right? You had nightmares? What? I used what? to have the worst, man. I just used what to have. What would it be about? Like how? Because I went cold turkey. You know, when okay. I when I got out of the streets, I went cold turkey. Like it's it's it's, it's some niggas out there right now that still owe me some money. Okay. Literally. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had my work phones and I threw them away. But I knew if I tried to go back and collect what people owed me that I would be back, back in the, in the in game. The, yeah, yeah. Right? So yeah. there was only one way to do it, to walk away. And, you know, I shout out to Tip for that because Tip was the one telling me, like, bro, you can't do both. Like, it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Right? And then, you know, if you listen to what people say in the music, you think everybody's doing both. But they're really not. Yep. You know nah. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's <laughs> like these people out here tell you they just own all these Marley's and Percocets. They're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're not doing that. You know, they just, it sounds good. So I get it. And 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 um, I threw my phones away, and that was my only connection to the streets anyway. So I went cold turkey. Now, mind you, um, it was a little, you know, it was it it was a little scary because that's the only way that I was taking care of my family uh -huh. and paying my bills. And I had real bills. Like, it wasn't like I was living. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And the palm is nowhere like that. You know, I'm living You like, have five figure right, monthly right, bills. Right, right. Okay. I had bills. Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. And now I'm depending on rap. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I ain't got a deal yet. I'm depending on rap with mixtapes. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there's that. And um, just that process, you asking the, the nightmares, it was just like, 
when you've done something so long, it don't seem wrong, and then people around you start going to prison like and getting real like Buck Roger years, you got to really like sit down and go like, okay, shit, I know I'm next, so I'm preparing yeah. for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> like, if, if me and you hanging out, and all three of us hanging out, and we getting busy, and then you go to prison, and mm-hmm. she go to prison, and he go to prison. Like, what's, what means I ain't next? Yeah, We yeah. together. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? We, yeah. we moving the yeah. groove. And so now it's like, oh, shit, so... A lot of my, and I don't think a lot of people know that, like a lot of my first half of my career up until the recession, like I was depressed and didn't even know the word for depression. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I had anxiety and didn't know the word for anxiety. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was, I had post-traumatic stress and didn't know well, the words yeah, for, for that, right? How did it show up? Well, it started to show up when I started to get, what do you mean, like when did it happen? Like how, like what are some instances where you're experiencing anxiety? Is it before you go on tour? Is no, it- this is like real, this is before like rap. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. I'm experiencing anxiety because I'm paranoid. I'm thinking that the feds gonna kick in my door any day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, I got issues with people on the other side of town who are just as violent as, and, and it's about their issue as I am. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh I don't know if this rap thing is gonna work. Work, yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm running low on money. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I got all my childhood trauma and all the things that I've been through in the game. And did you have kids during this time too? I had my son. son. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had all these things that I was going through in the game that I, you know I don't, I don't really want to talk about on the radio, but like it was just real life shit. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I'm dealing with that all at the same time. On top of the fact that I'm starting to get buzz. I just got this Def Jam thing going. And then I had polyps on my vocal cords. That's right. And I, I tore my vocal cords. Yeah, yeah. Operation. And I had to, I had, I had to sit out yeah. for a while. Uh-huh. And I had an operation. I, I didn't have insurance, so I had to pay for it out of brown paper bag. Def Jam didn't pay for it. Nah, they. I didn't want them to know. Like, oh, cause you, okay. Because if they knew, yeah, like Coach K, yeah. Coach Kaden was like, "Yo, we can't let nobody know." Yeah. He was right though. You know what I'm saying? He was mm-hmm. right because he was like, "You let them know, they going they gonna back out." Mm-hmm. You know, you're the hottest thing on the streets. And, was was and, Jay there by that time? No, no, nah, nah, he wasn't there. Oh, okay. All Kevin right. Lyles and L.A. Reid was there. Shakir Stewart, bless his soul. And then, by the way, all these things are happening. And then, um, so I get over that. And then, I want to make sure I say this right. Then, I, because I, I, I wasn't taking care of myself. So I was like 260, you know, I'm, you know, 65 pounds overweight, something like that. Because my whole diet is Chris Dial and Waffle House. Mm. And, and wings from Magic City, like this what is how a I'm menu. Yeah, uh-huh. this, how, this is how I'm living, you know, because right. I didn't know anything about health and taking care of my. I'm not drinking water. I'm not doing any of those things. So, all this is going on, and I'm trying to like, you know, just figure out my life. And the nightmares that I was having was about how I had left the game and I needed money, and I was trying to make one or two more plays, mm. and I got caught. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. So I'm waking up like sweating and heart beating like this is oh my god! Like no, Damn. you know what I mean? I'm not even bullshitting. Right. Yeah, no. uh, it was for real, bro. Like, and I went through that for a while, and I just like you know, like I said, I just got rid of my phones, and I just like you know, I just trusted in God. I was like, you know, I know mm-hmm. I got a bigger purpose, so just show me, you know. And and by that time, you know what I'm saying, we dropped Thug Motivation 101, Ooh. and we was off to the races. Man. A lot of people don't even know. Like I had to mix Thug Motivation 101 with sign language. With sign language, yeah, what because you, I couldn't talk. Oh, wow! Yeah, oh, I had shit. to mix it with sign language. So you had your through the wire moment, kind of. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was having to write it down, tell them turn this up, turn this down. It was serious, man. And I, and, you know, I had all the success going, and um, I had all these shows lined up. Like the money was there. Like I could see it. It was in a bag. It yeah. was in a box. Like it was there. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't go on the road because I couldn't. I couldn't talk. Mm-hmm. How long was the recovery time? <laughs> it almost took about. I, I say almost a year. Damn. Yeah. What? Yeah, it was about eight months. Yeah. And there's a lot of opportunities that yeah. could fill up a year. Yeah, and I, and you know, in eight in eight months, you can be not even relevant anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so you get to that, and then the, you know, I get my voice back, of course. Uh, shout out to uh, Mama Jan, like she's a vocal coach for like Justin Bieber and all them, so she had to help me get my voice back. Um, so I got that, and then I went on to success, and then after that, that's when the bottom fell out. You know, when Thug Motivation came. Yeah, out. I don't got to tell y'all about all that. that no, went on, no, but not a, yeah. The, the yeah. bottom fell out, and then now it's like, oh shit, I'm going to jail. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let's talk yeah. about that. And if I don't, am I going to be able to write another album like this one? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not doing that shit no more. Right. There's no way. Yeah. And, and all that was going on, man. And it was just one of those moments. And, and then, you know, things just started happening. And, and um, 
you know, I just started to, you know, really go into a downward spiral because I didn't really know who I was or what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Cause I left what I knew. Yeah. I'm trying to be a rapper. I'm not really a rapper. Mm -hmm. I can't really get in the room with these guys and cause this is what they do. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like right. Tip is a rapper. Yeah, Tip's an MC. You know what I mean? He's an MC. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> this is a skill set they had. I'm telling stories about my life. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I looked at it. And it wasn't until the recession was why I really came into my own like I have arrived. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a big part of my success. And then that started to happen. And then my main man, you know, Shakir Stewart, mm -hmm. you know, God bless his soul. God bless yeah. him, man. From Oakland, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, this was my backbone. Like, this was yeah. my go to guy. This was the guy who was telling me what I need to do, how I need to do it. And he was really a lot of my confidence. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, he was a big piece of my confidence because I wasn't, I didn't think I was that good. You know, he would come in there and boost me up. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is the one. You know, he was DJ Khaled before DJ Khaled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, and that happened. And, you know, just going through all these things, and I don't, I don't want to make it sound like it's a a, a bad thing because I learned so Absolutely. much from, from all every, of it. And yeah. every, everything that happened was supposed to happen, happen. how it happened. Because I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be able to look somebody square in the eye and tell them, okay, and even in the book, like in my experiences, this is what I know to be true. Yes, right? yeah. this is what I understand mm -hmm. that could and possibly can happen. Right, and this is what I'm gonna tell you that even if you done wrong, uh, 40, 50 percent of your life, you still got another 50 percent of your life that you can make it right. Mm -hmm. you, Amen. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, like mm -hmm. you don't have to stay in the same space For real. Mm -hmm. just because that's the way it was set up. You can change the narrative. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I was. That's what I was born to do: change the narrative. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Jeezy, man, I love this, man. Um, the proof is in the pudding. You got a beautiful family. You got an amazing wife. That's my colleague, yes, yes. my homie. Yes. Um, and I love seeing you in this role. Yeah. You know, the yeah. the, the father, the the parent, the husband. Yes, sir. How, how how has that worked for you personally? I mean, you see it, baby. My yeah. skin glowing. Look at his skin. Oh, come on, man. He got his <laughs> manicure, the pedicure. You see it? 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 Come on, man. <laughs> You say, he happy. says, "Why you see it? You see it? Yeah. Happiness looks good on you. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Good on yeah. you. It looks really good nah, on you. I, I, I love my family, man. Yeah. I love, I love our dynamic. I love the way we rock. I love how we people don't understand it because it ain't for them to understand. And mm -hmm. You know just as well as I know, like." My wife from the Bay, so I don't know why people get it misconstrued. She's just like us on the low. Bro, <laughs> that's what I've been my, trying to tell them. My wife pop off. I had to I calm her. You. Like, I have to calm her down. I'm like, yo, you bugger right now. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm way too classy for this shit you <laughs> saying. Like, let's leave them people alone. Like, <laughs> you know how you remind us, Jeezy, that everybody's a, a teacher that enters our life? Yeah. Um, in your relationship with Jeannie, are there any new habits or new beliefs or beliefs? beliefs that you sharpened while being with her i mean you know my wife is she loves save money i i didn't you know i'm trying to be like yo, i'm trying you know to know what that's cold that's cold culture, culture. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. save money um but i i would say to family mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying because i came from a broken home so i didn't besides my uncle hoss and his wife and i told him that they was at a house the other day i gave them their flowers that's the only besides them in the cosby's you know from what we know of that's course. that's the only structure of a family I've ever seen. You know, people sitting down wow. having dinner and, you know, conversing and, you know, cleaning up the kitchen together. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've never seen that, mm. right? And and culturally, um, her family, they're, they're really tight. You know what I'm saying? And they really do a lot of things together, which makes um, it easier for me to do things with my family. Yeah. Like, I've seen my father more in the last, you know, five years than I've probably seen my whole life, mm. you know wow. what I'm saying? Yeah, mm. and even like, you know, some of my cousins and, and things, and it's just like the family part is real because mm. I didn't realize um, how much that affects your life and how much that keeps you grounded as well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I, I didn't, so he said I didn't yesterday realize that. to um, Marlon. He said he was going on a family vacation, Marlon Kraft. Oh, Marlon yeah. Kraft, yes. Yeah. And yeah. I told yeah. him you need yeah. that. Yeah, you no, you gotta it. have to keep you grounded. Cause you know, you out here, you making moves and people love you for what you do, but you know, you're still human. Right. Yeah, and you still have mm -hmm. to recharge and replenish and you just want to be around. And that's one thing I learned, you know, and, and, and I should have in the book as well. 
I I lost a lot, but I gained a lot of quality people. Mm-hmm. And my friendships and my family ships that I have now, I cherish them. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because good people, man, that's like that's that's what life is real. I mean, you get all the money in the world, but yeah. you know, I've seen some people that are stupidly rich and they just alone. Like you just be like, damn dog. Right. You know, nobody wanna hang out on the yacht with you. Yeah. <laughs> on the yacht. Alone on the yacht. A lonely that. yacht. That sounds yeah. miserable. You know, I mean, like, nobody wanna I mean, on my album of, shit. Right. <laughs> I, got, I got a yacht. couple of callers I wanna get to before before that you put out. That says a lot about you. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody on a yacht. <laughs> that big old look at that big old Maybach free guy. Free Drinks at all? Yeah, right. ain't nobody there. Nobody. Y'all have the lobster. No <laughs> Look at the DJ. Who he spinning for? Um, we got a couple of callers I want to take, but uh, oh, just to conclude on the book, because mm-hmm. I know we got to move. Mm-hmm. Evolve or die. I told you was one of my favorite chapters. Yes, yes, yes. Because we witnessed everything. I felt like when it came to you doing that versus uh, with Gucci, I knew that would impact our community, mm-hmm. uh, our culture. I only saw positive things I was hoping to come out of it, right? Um, right. But I knew that was a hard decision to make. I know Larry Jackson was pressuring you to do he, it. He, yeah, yeah, Larry was, uh, yeah. Yeah, Larry was pressuring you. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, to me, it felt like it was something you needed to do to be the person yeah. that you were aiming to be. Well, what it was was I had already done so much work on myself and and – it, it it was a moment where, you know, me and dude would see each other. Because, you know, when he went, we went away, he came back. You know, it was a lot of time between that. Mm-hmm. And we would see each other, and it was just like, I didn't feel, you know, you know how you run into somebody, you like, okay, well, you know, what's up? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It wasn't like that. Because whatever he went through when he was where he was at, I guess he changed too. Mm-hmm. And the energy in the air as far as the culture, when you leaders – you can't just leave the question mark of what it is, right? You have to get to some type of understanding uh, and, and some type of conflict resolution, mm-hmm. right? And for me, the verses was, let's take it to the music, right? Yeah. And let's show people that we can be in the same building, right? And then let's see where we at with it. And to me, that's what it was about because I didn't really want to do it until like Vaughn died, yeah, you know, Freshhead died, yeah, you know, I'm thinking about Nipsey, um, you know, and it was just a lot of people dying I knew in the street, and I'm like, damn, like, and it's cool when you in the streets, like, that's what's up, because mm-hmm. everybody want to be about the issue, but it's even worse when these kids make it or these young cats make it. Cause even like the, I, I don't even you know it's crazy because I remember I did the Super Bowl party for Puff during the Super Bowl, and I had it at my uh, one of my compounds, um, Midtown in Atlanta, and everybody was there, Meek Mill, Fab, and everybody, and there was just kids standing beside Fab, and I knew he had something to him, but I didn't know who he was, right? And to come to find out, you know, it was Pop Smoke. Mm. Uh, so after he died, it just was just like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I'm thinking about all that as they're trying to pitch this to me. And I'm just like, yo, I don't know what they own, but I'm going to do this for the culture. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to do this for me. And I'm going to do this for the people who out there who can't have any type of issues and figure out how to work through them. Because I feel in my heart, if... Big and Pac had some real people around them. Mm. They would both still be here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They would both still be here. Mm. And that's the sad part about it. Because once you're gone, you're gone. Yeah. And everything that you had, it go with you. So you taking care of your mama, <clears throat> that's gone. You taking care of, you know, the people that you're employing, that's gone. What do they do? You a leader. Yeah. You know, and it said you want to, you know, you want to kill the body, kill the head. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna tell you like this, you know, and 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 this is real for me. Like they say, when you're born, you look like your daddy, and when you die, you look like your decisions. So that's what I'm on. Mm. Yeah, you feel me? I like that. Yeah, Jeezy, man, give this man a round of applause, man. I gotta take one caller, man. I was gonna end on that. That was perfect, like a I know. movie. I know. But- <laughs> I got callers here. Hey, Lang, Langle, Langley, go ahead. What's your question? Hey. 
Peace, peace, peace. Good morning to what everybody. Up? How y'all doing? Peace, peace. Hey, man, I just want to give my shout outs to the whole tribe of Sway in the morning, HB, everybody in there. Thank you, Big King. Love. Thank you, brother. Thank you, show. Thank you, sir. Um, wait, one sidebar before I get to uh, Jeezy, HB, if she's there. Man, I was listening to uh, my my kind of nigga with her and MOP the other day. You put, you put, you put, you put, you it was a little snippet, and I went and watched the video of Jeezy. If you haven't heard that, you know what? A lot of people. I'm, I'm, I'm going that. to Google it. You Trust know what? Me. A lot of people don't know lately. Um, shout out to my brother Omar Epps. Omar Epps directed that video. Did he really? Okay. And he absolutely oh, did. He was like, "You gotta do a video for this song." So that's all Omar Epps. Shout out to my brother. Oh, shout, out to o. O. shout out to Shout out to Omar. Something else. That, that, that song was so full of fire. But Thank uh, you. my man Jesus, hey, listen, man. So I'm up in Connecticut, and um, I did a little six stretch, a little six piece stretch, man. And I swear that that thug, that 101 Oof. in my mind is is classic. That that thing got me through, you know, max max facility. You know, wow. 23 hours in the cell, that that type of thing, Oof. man. Wow. And um, even with the content or whatever it was, it still showed that, you know, our minds are. Our minds is what it is, man, and, right. and and most people go to Ivy League schools to learn the shit that we learn outside on the sidewalk. Right. And uh, I got out, got right to it, man, and when I get that feel, if I'm slacking or whatever, man, I throw that goddamn one-on-one in and I get to it, man. <laughs> That's what it so, is. I miss, the concerts. I miss the concerts, but man, I, I applaud all of the work that you've done, man, that I've seen. Of course, I don't I don't know everything that okay. you into, Okay. But. Yeah, but that's well, what we, it is. We, man, we, we like it. Hey, man, man. let him talk, man. Jesus. That's what it is. Stay up. <laughs> <laughs> no, he he hypes, right? That's what it is, man. Stay up, King, and just stay on your path, baby. Just don't let nothing derail you. All right. Hey, man, we appreciate you, brother. You a super citizen, Let's too, man. Let's wait in the morning. Um, we got Draw D from Detroit. What you want to say to Jeezy? D. D. What up, dude? What up, though? D, you there? Yeah, what up, though? Oh, shit, damn. <laughs> Man. Perk up, D. 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 This live What's radio, good? D. Stop Don't playing. Jeezy and that's yours? Don't embarrass us, bro. Uh, uh. Hey, 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 man. It ain't D. It's B. Oh, okay. My bad. B from Detroit. What up, though, Jeezy, man? What's happening, homie? Hey, man. I just want to tell you, keep doing what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, man, stay motivated, you know, because we from that side. You know what I'm saying? Already. You know? And I'm in your city. I don't really man. understand. I'm in your city on the 14th, man, so... Oh, man, we there every time. Look, yes, sir. Man. Understand, man. You know what I mean? I'm going to say free Zaza. Already. You know what I'm talking about? Already. Yeah, free man. Zaza, and I'm going to say P8 Iron. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I'm yeah. talking about? Already. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what it is, bro. <laughs> you know what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's enough cryptic <laughs> talk. Boy, hey, hey, look, Sway. Hey, Sway. Yeah. Hey, Sway, you the coldest, though, man. You know what I'm saying? For real. You the yeah, coldest, yeah. boy. You know what I mean? Have to be y'all the coldest, bro. What up? And the D hold y'all down. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, yeah. love. No. All right, show you right, One love, bro. One love, bro. Right. See you. you know what it is. We're going to go all the way up in that bitch. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, fuck it. Let's get it, D. We all the way up, baby. He hung up, Sway. Oh, yeah, yeah. He got out of there. Yeah, yeah that's a, what language is that, Jeezy? Detroit here it is. Yeah, all right. <laughs> got to be from the D to know. You gotta know be from Shout the out D to PA, know. baby. Come Shout on, out to man. PA. Hey, man, I, I want to I wanna say, I don't want to tell the whole book, but I want people yeah. to really read this book, man. Yeah. Like, because I, I promise you, I've out of all the times I've interviewed you when I was younger, um, a younger journalist, right. I did deeper deeper research. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, so you went in. I used to go in a little yeah, deep when yeah. I was younger. And, um, and I saw a lot of the things I knew. I know a lot about your story, mm -hmm. even stuff we never even talked about, just from affiliation people I know that know you. Right. But reading this book, man, it, it gave me a different understanding of who you are as the person, mm -hmm. as a human being, right. you know, and you're not the sum of one thing, you're the sum of all things, For right? Sure. All those decisions you made. And so it's great to see, uh, to me, this is like a, a love story. This is like a success story. It's a motivational story. Right. There's a lot of people who walk similar paths as you who could learn from it and learn a higher frequency of thought. Mm. That mindset mm. is really would be switching. Yeah. It don't be nothing change, else. Change, change your mindset. Change your life. Bro. Mindset will change your change life. Change your whole and, life. And man. when people have that revelation, right. 
they walk in the room and they skin shine. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Their beard has a sheen on it. <laughs> right. You know that the coco, ty- that cocoa butter do its job. Does do its job. <laughs> you got you got a manicure. You got a pedicure. You yeah. on that high frequency, you man. Do it. And I want to say thank you, man. Please come back. He coming for back for sure. For sure. And, and, yeah. and for everybody out there in, uh, in the world, the book is out today. Adversity for sale anywhere Woo! books are sold. And uh, if you don't like reading the hard copy, you can definitely get the audio version. And I, I, I did it myself. So nice. your boy's voice is on that. And I just want to thank y'all for always giving us a dope platform to come and just be ourselves, man. Like, this yeah. is this is real, Sway. When they told me I was coming to see you guys, I was excited. So. Thank you, bro. Thank you, man. We were excited. We were excited and I'm, I'm going to Google that song, too. Don't do that. My, my, my kind of nigga. That's what it's called. Yeah. You'll, you'll Sway, come across it all. Ni- it was right. 96. It was <laughs> a different time. You knew what my energy <laughs> was. I'm grown now. <laughs> Heather was a bully rapper, bro. Super bully yo, rapper. She, she, need to, she need to face her adversities. <laughs> my book coming, y'all. Be on the peak. H. Billy. All right. All right.